now going to the fourier series so fourier series is something uh, that we are sort of familiar with uh, i'm not sure if you are familiar we had talked about it last time so fourier series transform fourier transformation is nothing but basically taking a signal and decomposing into multiple sine waves of varying frequency right so i'll give you an idea so what you do is basically something like this so you have a frequency like you have a data like this say for example right so what you do is you break it up into this is equals to so this data is equals to composition of say lot of small frequency waves into a constant a naught so a1 plus there's a slightly higher frequency curve which is say into a2 plus a slightly lot more higher frequency sine wave say a3 and what you're saying is basically this particular signal is composed of multiple smaller signals which are sin sinusoidal signals and at different frequencies right so if this frequency is say omega this is 2 omega this is 3 omega and so on and so forth right so basically Fourier transform is taking any signal like this and breaking it down into multiple component signals of varying frequencies right so that's that's what Fourier transform is all about so that is exactly what we are trying to do here as well so when we do decompose we are basically trying to get into a trend plus multiple seasonal patterns right so this seasonal pattern in itself could be composed of multiple seasonal patterns there's a weekly pattern there's a monthly pattern there's a yearly pattern so that is exactly what Fourier transform does uh, there's not if you if you want to kind of have a lot of better read into what Fourier transform is I have you have the corresponding additional resources to look at uh, but at the end of the day Fourier transformation is basically nothing but having a signal and breaking it down into multiple smaller components of different frequencies right so if you have a overall time series across 15 years you are basically trying to if you use Fourier transform you would be breaking that into a minute level pattern into hourly level pattern weekly level pattern then monthly level pattern then yearly level pattern and so on and so forth the idea is to kind of have a particular it's basically you're saying that 15 year data is a composition is a summation of the patterns across all of this right so that is a concept of Fourier series and that's what we had also talked about in the last lecture so don't worry about that uh, if you have read about it fair enough if you have not and you're still keen to understand Fourier series go through the additional resources uh, the next up is holiday effects right holiday effects is basically nothing that a uh, lot of times basically there are some particular days of the year which are always holiday or probably sometimes some specific days of the year are holidays so you already basically the idea is that you know somehow incorporating that also as part of because in case of time series data you this is one feature engineering right? so in case of time series data you already know for each of the dates whether they were a holiday or not so basically the holiday engineering is nothing but so this is this feature engineering is nothing but adding one particular column which is say h which is say one zero zero so if this was a holiday so suppose december 14 right so you know that december consists of a lot of holidays so basically you can kind of uh, say that December is basically a holiday month of sorts right because there's a lot of holidays in there so that's one way because in this case the data is a monthly level in case your data was actually of a day level kind of a data instead of December 14 you actually had like each day here then you can kind of do this much more easily right whether each day was a holiday or not but in case you have a month level data you kind of try and do some heuristic based approaches to you know how you can kind of convert or if there are say more than 20 days of a month or 15 days of a month or 10 days of a month are holiday then you can call that a holiday month right so that, that that's the logic you can use to kind of uh, make this feature engineering in this feature engineering basically what you're doing is for each of the points in the time series whether it was a holiday or not so in case say you have a hourly level data right uh, so from nine o'clock in the morning to say five o'clock in the evening and you know that 12 to 1 is basically some time where people go for lunch and you basically know that already beforehand then you can basically compute something like a holiday feature kind of a thing where you put as one for the time period between 12 and 1 and for the rest of the period it's zero uh, that sounds clear right holiday effect is basically nothing but a binary feature which is basically to say that if there was a holiday around of sorts so any holiday or lack of activity or whatever you want to put it however you want to put it that's the broad idea right so there's nothing nothing that is uh, 
like uh, enforced on you on this like you, how you kind of calculate the holiday thing it's it's a bit vague uh, if it's a data day level data every day you have the corresponding uh, values then for each day you basically know whether it's a holiday or not so you can directly that's easy but in case you have a month level data then you can basically compute like whether it was a holiday month depending on if more than x number of days in that month were holidays or not or if it's a hour level data then you can basically compute on the fact that if there was you know if there are particular parts of the day particular parts of the day which are not very active right so peak hours non peak hours and based on that you can have a feature engineering so that this is this is these are all basics right there's nothing we are talking about is extremely rocket science so that's something we should kind of you know th these are all feature engineering techniques it's just that they're very specific to time series because in case of time series you already can because you already have the dates or the time or the hour you already know before and you can kind of compare that but anything apart from this that you can compute is also something uh, I would definitely uh, encourage you to think about this because these are all common sense based things right there's nothing nothing absolutely algorithm thinking that we are trying to do these are all engineering kind of hacks that we are doing fair enough so holiday and now the final and the probably the most important thing that you do in a time series feature engineering which is using lag variables right so we had discussed about lag variables in last class so lag variable is basically this that so you have so lag variable adding lag variable basically means that y t minus 1 right so there's a feature which is basically nothing but the t minus 1 at values so the first call the first value is not applicable because that's the first value in case of this this is 0 1 2 3 right so then y t minus 2 that is na then na again and then it starts off 0 1 2 3 right so what, lag features are nothing but basically something uh, you know you are trying to lag the time series by two steps one step three step and again you can take lag features as many as you want right so lag feature of length one like one lag feature two lag feature three lag feature four lag absolutely up to you right so lag features are something that we are familiar with uh, so that that that's more or less the kind of all the ideas that we had to discuss around lag features uh, sorry not lag features these are all the kind of ideas that we have to discuss around feature engineering that kind of happens in time series data uh, now let's go through an example but before we kind of get into the example I want to kind of summarize the entire thing for you once again so for feature engineering what are the things that we talked about right so the first is trend and seasonality right so for trend what do we did what was the feature engineering we did we basically added we basically added this particular column right which is basically t equals to zero sorry oh i kind of did it wrong out here oh by the way one small mistake that i noticed here so this is y t and say so this is 4 8 10 15 16 right so in this case this value would not be zero or one this would be basically 4 8 16 15 so that was one mistake because this is zero these are the basically I'm, i've taken the lag in time which ideally i should i should have just taken the lag in this particular value right 4 8 16 and so on i'm sorry this kind of looks a bit messy but i had to include it in all single slides so y t so this is your y t values right at every point you have the corresponding values then this is the part that you did for trend analysis this is the part you did for seasonality analysis this is the further one for holiday effects and these are the log lag features right so there are four things that we have discussed again i am kind of going summarizing them again for you so first part is trend trend was basically to capture the you know overall long trend and for that what did you do as a feature engineering you basically added t equals to 0 1 2 3 as a new feature next was quarterly or seasonal pattern uh, seasonal pattern based features so something to capture seasonal patterns we talked about quarterly you could do quarterly yearly weekly monthly whatever level of granularity you want to look at you want to add all of them you can add all of them so what that basically meant was you basically and that also you can do in multiple ways one way is basically to say for a given corresponding day or corresponding month what is the quarter it belongs to and then have a one hot encoding of that and then there's one where you can kind of look at what is the you know the sales across all the quarter and take the average of that and use that as a feature and you can do all all those sorts of things right so uh, let me kind of draw and explain on a new data set only so this is your original data set so this is your original data set this is your december 14 
this is your Jan 15. So Feb 15, March 15, and then this is April, April 15, right? So let's the values are here 200, 300, 500, 600, 800, right? So these are the values. Now the first first thing that we did, right? The first feature engineering that we did was basically for trend analysis to capture the overall trend, right? So for that, what we did was basically add a new feature, which is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? The next part was about capturing the seasonal trend, right? So for that, we did talked about capturing quarterly trend. So we could have FQ1, FQ2, FQ3. As I had already explained, we don't need a FQ4 because uh, there are four quarters. So if there's a 0, 0, 0, which is basically the first case, right? If December 14 is the first, quarterly first quarter last quarter so in that case as you can see if, if it doesn't belong to fq it doesn't belong to q1 it doesn't belong to q2 it doesn't belong to q3 automatically implies it belongs to q4 right so you can have a feature like this then 100100100 and then 010 right and then you can also have something like q average which is basically telling what is the corresponding uh, average of uh, that particular quarter right so this is 200 in this case this is 500 plus 600 1100 plus 300 which is 1400 1400 by 3 uh, or probably let's just take median right so median of 300 500 and 600 is 500 so this is q median 500 this is 500 this is 500 and then for april 15 the value is 800 right so this is one way this so these are all the features that we have we can use for seasonal trend capturing in this case i've just talked about one particular seasonality which is quarterly trend you can have multiple ways and also here instead of median you could take some you could take whatever you want to right so that's up to you and that this is the other kind of feature engineering that we did and then the next one which was basically about capturing holiday right and holiday is basically to say with if this corresponding data row is basically belonging to a holiday or a non-peak period right so this probably December is a holiday month because there are a lot of holidays in that and rest of the months are not holidays, right? And then you have the lag features, right? So Y T minus one. So Y T minus one basically is missing here. There's no corresponding value, but from going on here, it's 200, then 300, then 500 and then 600, right? So, and then you can have probably Y T minus two, which is nothing but N A. Again at the top, any at the back, and then 200, 300, and then 500, right? So this is the way you kind of calculate lag features. Lag features is basically the same values of YT, but lag by a one time unit, right? In this case, one unit is month. So basically, every data point lag by one month. So at this Jan 15, you are basically looking at the sales volume of uh, December 14, right? At Feb, you are looking at the sales volume of Jan. And that is basically the concept of lag feature. So these are basically broadly the overall feature engineering that we do. Log on to Grey Atom's learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.